Good afternoon everyone. A warm welcome to our webinar on the topic Study MBBS in Malaysia. I'm Dr. Nimshad here from Aju Zone, your host today. I also have Dr. Jahidul Islam, Associate Professor, Faculty of Medicine from University of Cyber Jaya, and Mr. Shiva, International Students Department, University of Cyber Jaya. So, Today's topic is MBBS in Malaysia with scholarship and we will be discussing about various opportunities which you can avail while studying at University of Cyber Jaya. At the end of this webinar, we will have a Q&A session where you can ask your doubts. So let us start with Dr. Jayadul Islam on the topic MBBS at University of Cyber Jaya. Because, you know, uh, we have to tell the truth. So, okay, uh, sometimes parents asking how many credits you have because to validate the degree or, you know, to take back this degree to India, you have to have minimum 200 plus credits because uh, you are teaching five years, but your annual credit is less than 40 MMCL throw, uh, MCL throw that degree. They're not going to accept it. Okay, so we already uh, confirm, and this is the written evidence of we are having 200 plus credits. So in term of accreditation, not only in India, any part of the world, they can go and sit for their registration exam. So that transcript going to be validated because we cover the uh, promised 200 plus uh, credit hours. Yearly is actually 40, uh, the standard rules. Yearly, it should be 40 credits. So in five years, it is 200 but we are teaching six, uh, six credit extra. This part is very, very crucial. Probably some other universities in Malaysia, private universities, they may can try to be your partner, but be careful with one thing. Majority, uh, I think uh, nowadays in Kuala Lumpur, I think only we, University of Cyber Jaya, at a private medical school, we can be accessed by the government hospital in city. I repeat, not many private medical schools in Malaysia can do their clinical posting within the Kuala Lumpur major hospital. Uh, major, most of our private, you know, private competitors, it can be Masa, it can be Segi, it can be Monas, it can be UCSI. None of them have the permission to do housemen in Kuala Lumpur. If you ask me by university name, I can tell you where really they are sending their students to. Uh, do the clinical posting. So they are paying the tuition fee to be in Kuala Lumpur, but it's only for two years. After two years, the student will be spread all over. Now, what is the challenge with that? There are a few hidden challenges are there. Uh, I think I've been working in Malaysia almost 10 years. So I have a uh, experience of working with outside city and now I'm working within the city. The problem I faced with the students international outside the city, the language problem. In, in the village, in a far away, 400, 500 kilometers away from Kuala Lumpur, don't expect most of your patient hospital, they can communicate with you in English. It was a really practical problem for them. So what happens, students have very good knowledge. They prepare very well for the exam, but patient couldn't communicate with the student in English. So what happened? His result was not as expected. And for international students, if they have to repeat one semester, a lot of money, a lot of burden to the uh, parents. So uh, we are very lucky and it really requires a lot of uh, our uh, capability as well, you know, diplomatic capability, administrative capability, and as the institution, our capability to secure Hospital Kuala Lumpur, Hospital Putrajaya. Shalom is like old Delhi, the old capital of Malaysia, Hospital Saddang. So all major hospital, whatever, why Malaysia have been known to worldwide, we have access all those. Another advantage, if student have been posting sometime here, sometime there, how about the hostel? So every time if their posting is changed, so they have to give newly house deposit, they have to go find a new place for stay. For us, it's a bit stable. 90% time student able to stay in the same place in the university hostel. 
and sometimes office arranged transportation or you know they do the share riding and all that is within the city so they are really saving their times and money in term of roading and moving for the finding for housing so this is i believe uh, it's honestly i'm saying you can check with other all university is nowadays google is very much you know you can find the truth this is one of the strength of, with the university of cyber jaya so it not uh, related to patients uh, speaking or patient cooperation not only about the hospital there is another one advantage like if any student finish mbbs here and they want to do cardiology md in cardiology so he already know the professors because he has done his 3 years posting under the same hospital so that is a big advantage rather than 3 year they been stay in outside the city and suddenly coming and want to do md in cardiology or ms in orthopedics all professors are new but for our students they already know all the professors i think if anybody uh, medical parents uh, you know mbbs parents they will be knowing the value of face recognition uh, phenomenon in medical science i know you your 50% effort already done because a lot of vibers are here everybody has the knowledge but not maybe everybody can present you know in the same way but if i know a person i will give second chance or third chance to deliver your knowledge so that sympathy come from the face recognition so this is i believe very strong area of university of sabajaya okay uh, this is another part what really give us a uh, five star rating by mqa and mmc you see the mmc requirement actually one is to see six the student lecturer ratio for here one lecturer taking care of 4.3 i think now even more maybe less of 4.5 but the tolerable limit for mq and mmc one is to six so we are less populated so what what is the advantage with that each lecturer can recognize the students and really can find out the problems so who is understanding who is not understanding who is bit lack of focus so that they do the uh, more personal uh, uh, you know attainment with the student to improve their uh, our performances so medical is a very expensive program the reason is the you know you need really personal care in the hospital posting each of our clinical setting not more than 8 student with one lecturer in each of the posting in india when i was student <clears throat> in munnabai mbbs also we saw students are far behind they don't know what is going with within the cadaver but here it not going to be happen like that they really can see very closely uh, with the, all the practicums uh this is also very much common with india st medical student and hospital bed ratio this is at this moment we have 1 is to 4 here i think the requirement is 2.5 to 3 because it's not as populated as india and bangladesh i believe in india is 1 is to 5 but you show me the doctors patient ratio in india is one of the highest in the world one doctor for 1700 people and in bangladesh i think one doctor for 2200 people so there is one is to five but here malaysia one is to four so one student in each posting should have four patient so if i send student for psychiatric posting 10 student so that psychiatric hospital should be 50 bedded so each student should be able to uh, really see because that is their practical they really have to get four patients for learning one disease so if it is schizophrenia or depression each student in that particular uh, posting should be able to access minimum four patient so considering all this factor mqa has uh, rated us as a five star university so uh, i think i covered the majority of the concerned area uh, uh, which a curious mind should look for a mbbs program is the syllabus is the integrated program uh, like md you you know in usa and md in australia and also i have uh, confirmed we are more than 206 credit university and world ranking 603 our students going to posted in the major hospital in kuala lumpur and uh, 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 within the capital so there is no village travel uh, traveling for them and we also maintain very significant staff uh, lecturer student ratio and student hospital bed i think saying so i have reached at the end of my presentation and i would like to uh, proceed with the q and a session if there is any doubt 
I'll be happy enough to address all those concerns. Yes, sir, Nimshad. Nimshad? Yeah. We can't hear you. Bro, I think, uh, Dr. Nimshad, I think you have to switch on your microphone, bro. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Now, now we can hear you. Okay. So for the students, they can just uh, type the questions on the chat. So that will be more better because there are many attendees. Is there any Hindi speaking people there? I can, I can speak Hindi very fluently. Basically, most of the students, I think, are from Kerala, but it's oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. I know uh, Kerala, Kerala and Chennai people, they don't speak English. Uh, Hindi. Hindi. They speak. Yeah. They speak English. I know that. Or if you, if anyone want to ask the question, just you can, just you can, um, you know, raise the hand. There is an option. Raise the hand. So we can just, you know, allow to talk. Hi, Dipin. Hello. Uh, students, uh, you can ask any questions related to the middle program or MBBS program with the Jahidul Islam. Be able to answer you. Okay, anything like general question you have, you can ask either myself or the um, Dr. Dimshad. We are free to answer you. Uh, total, uh, somebody asked me about the total amount for this course. I think that any financial matter, your visa related matter, your arrival matter going to be addressed by uh, Mr. Siva. Uh, I'm here to give you answer related to syllabus, related to recognition, related to your future uh, uh, job scopes. Uh, I would like to talk on, this, on those matters only. Uh, yeah, hostel, I think uh, we have our own hostel. The fees, uh, course fee, hostel fee is separately going to be present or discussed by Mr. Siva, my colleague. He's going to discuss with you. I think I Shiva, then you can go yeah, ahead. You can, you can start. Yeah. yeah. You can start your presentation, bro. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Anything related to medical program, the content of the program, you have any uh, uh, questions, classes, you can ask. Doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think everybody asking about the fees. Yes, yes, yes. All basically, questions basically. are regarding the fees. So you can start your uh, presentation, bro. Someone, uh, USMLE. Uh, is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, read me. You asked me about the USMLE exam. Uh, I think uh, we have few students, when they finish basic science, they sit for uh, part one of USMLE. I think probably you know there are three steps of USMLE, part one, part two, and part three. And you will be happy to hear that. Uh, part one and part two, you can really sit from Malaysia and only the final part three, the clinical uh, assessment part, you have to go to either Singapore or maybe in USA. So uh, as we have an integrated curriculum and if you have the syllabus and personally, I also help students to give you the syllabus and books. So how you should prepare for part one? Uh, what are the things you should study for part two? So majority of our students who want to go to oversee, they sit part one after oh, first professional exam. Can you hear me? So they sit part one after first professional exam after year two, and they sit for part two after final professional exam. So after that, after second part, you need some clinical experiences. So once you completed your internship and you complete your second part, then you can fly to a designated center where you can take part three exam. Uh, so straight your answer, uh, there is a no problem to sit into USMLE exam. I got another question. Any option to practice in Malaysia? I'm from Bangladesh. How I'm working in Malaysia? I didn't study in Malaysia. So maybe I'm a good example in front of your eyes. Not only me. There are so many Yemenis, Sudanese, Lebanonese, blah, 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 also working in Malaysia. Why not Indians? 
and now also so many india my friends as i said i'm very fluent in hindi because i got many indian friends we work together so there is no issue either in academic arena or maybe in the clinical field you may can work but only with the mbbs you will not get a job you have to have a masters so if you want to go for clinical uh, field you want to be a surgeon you want to be a gynecologist you want to be a medicine uh, specialist then you have to do a post graduate degree in malaysia okay because malaysia uh, or if you want to do india also okay but answer is yeah you can work in malaysia i'm i'm working i'm a bangladeshi so i'm working there so i think got the answer about the practicing mci approving cyber j degree yes uh, i think the one thing about mci if you study from harvard and oxford also you cannot come straight forward and do practice in malaysia or uh, in india you cannot do your internship if you come from harvard medical school also this is i think the rule set by mci so what is the thing you complete your mbbs and you have to sit one 300 uh, m uh, mark exam so they are checking your knowledge is competitive enough you will you are safe enough to send in indian hospital environment now i think it is mandatory for every country even for bangladesh also bangladeshi students although we are working on that so a degree recognized by um, bangladesh medical council should be straight they should be able to work but we follow a lot of indian policy so at this moment the answer is you have to go back and you have to sit for fmg you know foreign medical graduate exam which is uh, 300 marks mcq exam only uh, i think is not a big deal many many students who study in bangladesh i think more, uh, you know they go back and they can uh, they can complete the exam but uh, i would like to say something again i'm telling one secret okay you came to malaysia you did mbbs now you said okay you don't want to go back india you want to go to canada or you want to be academician in malaysia is possible then you have to take a masters in basic science pathology anatomy physiology pharmacology then you do your msc in uh, that specialization area and you can be work in um, uh, in a university so after study you have two option one is academic option and another is the clinical option so you find what is your strength if you are good in study yeah, teaching research you come to academic field be a professor in university but if you say okay my passion is to be a clinician then you have to go and sit for the exam i think i would like to request uh, mr mr siva yeah there was uh, any any entrance exam for admission there was no our yeah. entrance exam uh, our entrance criteria is your cgpa because in malaysia anywhere there is is not practicing here entrance exam we'll be looking through your cgpa if your cgpa is 3 and if you have biology chemistry physics or math and if if you don't have more than c you are qualified enough to join our program uh what are the subjects uh, what are the subjects taught in first two years uh first two years we're going to teach um, anatomy physiology biochemistry uh, pathology microbiology and your clinical skills so all basic science along with the clinical skills and we have the difference in the delivering uh we we don't deliver okay can i practice i think i uh, read me i already give the answer uh, you can do the practice because you are going to get a provisional mmc certificate surgery you can uh, you can do but you have to complete your ms ms degree in surgery which is another four to five years masters program i think the same yeah. i think doctor they are asking about the internship how surgency housemanship oh how surgency yeah. internship yeah. Okay. internship foreign students they cannot do in malaysia the reason in malaysia housemanship is a government job because like india they don't allow private company to open the hospitals so majority hospital in these countries are government hospital like 
you have in Canada or some of the semi-socialist country. So as it is a uh, government job, so at this moment, it is not open to the foreigner. So you have to do housemen in your own country. But as I said, there is another way for you. If you don't feel you don't want to be a clinician, you want to be a university professor, then you need not to go back. After your MBBS, you do one master's here and you can be a teacher in year one and year two. And there are a lot of vacancies are there and a lot of foreign doctors are working there. I think uh, the same person have asked the question is like, uh, can work in Malaysia? He have asked a concern is, uh, he have heard that only he can work if he have studied in public universities. No, 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 this then, is wrong. It's a, it's a wrong perception. Firstly, okay. I think majority public university, they don't take foreign student for MBBS program. Okay. Majority of the public university in Malaysia, even forget about foreigners, even among Malaysia, there are three races. Other races has less privilege to go for MBBS program. So which is not correct. Foreigners even cannot enter into the public universities. Uh, once you completed your degree and if degree is recognized by your MCI, you shouldn't have any problem to sit for your FMG exam and complete your husbandship and you come back for do your masters. Then you can be a specialist in this country. Okay, uh, that is a very important question. Is the final exam done in every semester or yearly? Uh, okay, there are two kinds of exam. One is a semester final exam, another is the professional exam. So as I said, in year one, you have two semesters, semester one and semester two. So in semester one, you have to complete the all semester exam. In semester two, also you have to complete the all semester exam. Four semester in year one and year two combined together is called first professional exam. Same goes in year five, we got two semester. You complete those two semesters and you sit for final professional exam. So semester final exam is different. Professional exam is different. Which is same as like India also. India also follow the same kind of, they may be say block, not maybe semester. Done in every semester, or every main master in Malaysia. Okay, uh, if you completed MBBS, and if I'm not mistaken, again, your CGPA should be for masters is three. If you want to do PhD, CGPA 3.5. You can do masters, don't, don't worry for that. Just you focus on MBBS, you complete your degree in time, I will arrange for your master's posting, don't worry. We also have master's and PhD program. I take the responsibility. You're welcome.